All right, well, good afternoon, all. It is time for the Cub to get its uh, first early oil change, uh, like I typically do on my bikes. I, uh, I don't like waiting for the first official service. I think those intervals are a little too long for my taste. So I've got just over 300 miles on it now. It's uh, 309.2. And uh, what I'm going to do is dump the factory uh, oil out of there. Uh, I've just run it around, uh, warmed it up for about five minutes or so, brought it back, let it sit for a few minutes so the pipe isn't hot anymore. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil out, uh, install my new gold plug here, uh, magnetic drain plug. And uh, just to make sure that I'm getting the right one, hello, uh, just to make sure I'm getting the right one, uh, I'll put a set of calipers on the uh, original bolt, make sure this one isn't considerably longer, you know, gonna cause any interference issues, anything like that. And, uh, yeah, of course, I'm gonna put in what Honda says that it needs. So I'm gonna continue using the non-synthetic uh, through the first oil change, just so everything gets bedded in well. Uh, sometimes synthetic oils are a little too slippery to allow the, uh, the rings and all the stuff to bed in properly, so. Uh, We'll take care of that. And then the next thing is I'm noticing a little bit of uh, chain noise on it already, but you know, 300 miles, that's pretty normal maintenance uh, for me as well. Uh, so I'm gonna pop the uh, inspection plug off of that guy and uh, check the chain tension and uh, hit it with some of this stuff. Um, I really like this uh, Motorex chain lube uh, for my road bikes. Uh, as long as you don't put it on real thick, uh, it does a really good job. If you put it on too thick, then it just gets all cakey and uh, it can gather too much dust and debris and whatnot off the road. Uh, but where this is an uh, enclosed uh, chain case, it might uh, really not need too much in the way of maintenance. So we'll see how that plays out over the miles. So I'm going to get these guys out of the way. I'm going to try to record the, uh, the drain and uh, I usually use a clear uh, container for the first couple of oil changes. That way I can see the uh, color of the oil. You know, if you put it into a black drain pan, you can't really see anything. Um, and uh, I look for, you know, metal debris, uh, anything that's sparkly, shiny, just to kind of give me an idea of uh, the engine health uh, before things get out of hand. Uh, anyway, so I'll get this underway here. Get all my stuff out of the way. And it's going to be a 17 millimeter bolt. Um, Again, I don't have a factory manual on this guy. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the other camera is recording here. Um, there are two bolts underneath this thing. Uh, I am presuming uh, that one of them, as I get under here, I'll show you. Uh, I'm presuming that one of them is probably for the uh, transmission. Uh, I don't know if this thing shares oil uh, with the transmission and uh, engine or if they're separate. Uh, I would assume that they're together, but I could be wrong. So what we're going to do is get under here and I'll see if I can get a, a view with both cameras. Uh, so for that camera, well, I guess both cameras, it's going to get it. Get my arm out of the way and see if I can move this one in there. There are two drain bolts. Uh, the one that's typical on most Hondas is covered uh, by this, uh, you know, extrusion on the case uh, and that's where I always look for them. Uh, that's how my PCXs are, it's how my son's little CRF 110 which is a similar bottom end as this, uh, that's how they're set up. Now the other one is this guy and it has a copper ceiling washer on it uh, and whenever I see those I generally think you know transmission that's something that's going to use a uh, you know it's going to be a service item so I'm not really sure what to think of that. I need to get my service manual but it is still on route. So anyway, we're going to go ahead with this guy because I know that's the drain bolt and my uh, replacement bolt is the same size as that. So uh, that's where we start. Let me see if I can readjust the chest rig to be kind of aiming the right way. And uh, what did I just do? There we are. So 17, lefty Lucy. And it looks like probably going to get a little bit of a splatter on the uh, exhaust, but that's yeah, to be expected. I'll just hit that with a shop rag and, oh, did I got that on there? A shop rag and uh, some brake cleaner. Oh, there it goes. 
Okay, so I'm not using nitrile gloves because I couldn't find mine in the garage at this hot second. So I'm just gonna get dirty. I just don't want the ground to take the brunt of it. And can he do it? Yeah. Didn't lose a drop and I didn't even get much on me. I only got one on my thumb. So that oil is, uh, it's, it's an okay color. It's already pretty dark, but again, these motors don't have uh, oil filters. And of course I'm gonna get some wind blowing and it's gonna make this stuff drift everywhere. I don't have a wind brake on the other side of the bike. Servicing it's pretty simple, I'll say that. Uh, it's got a pretty good amount of ground clearance under here and the, uh, ooh, there's the wind. Uh, pretty good amount of ground clearance and the center stand lifts it way up, so it's good. Okay, I'm back. And armed with a shop rag and paper towels. And a funnel, of course. Okay, so while that's still drippy dry in there, we are going to uh, rearrange this chest rag a bit. Dry this guy off just to check it. We're not gonna be reusing it or it's sealing washer. I have uh, everything I need in the new gold plug kit, but what we are gonna do, this, which is the overall length of the seated bolt. So that is about as close as I can eyeball it. And that is 0.577, or for us lesser educated folk, 14.66. <laughs> so about, we'll just say 15 millimeters. Yeah, it's pretty close to 15. We'll pull the new one out and see if it uh, scopes out about the same. This is the Gold Plug MP01. Pretty common size for Honda, Yamaha, a lot of the metric bikes. Get out of there. Yeah, it might be a little longer. It is a touch longer. Hey, butterfly. It is a touch longer. Get off. Yeah, she's gonna be just a smidge longer, so I'm gonna seat that guy and gently turn the motor over and make sure we don't have any problems. Actually, I might stick uh, something in there to check for clearance, get a straw or something. Yeah, so we're up to 0.64 on that ballpark. Yeah, about 0.65. So, oh, the magnet works. So in millimeters, that would be about 16 and a quarter. Okay, anyway, what I'm gonna do is pause again real quick. I'm gonna grab uh, a straw or something and I'm just gonna push straight up in there and uh, Really what I should do is pull the spark plug and rotate the motor over without any load on it. Make sure that I'm clear in there. I'll figure this out. Uh, I'll be right back with you. All right, I'm back after a brief intermission and I'm gonna check this uh, hole with a soda straw here. And just see what kind of clearance I've got up in there for this uh, slightly, ever so slightly longer bolt, but you know. When you're dealing with reciprocating assembly, assemblies or rotating uh, gears, you never want anything in the way that just spells disaster. So here we go. I'll gently move that out of the way. I don't think it's dripping anymore. All right, get this camera aiming. I've got the other camera recording as well. Well, there is a screen there. So that's good. That's actually very good news. So as long as this bolt doesn't damage the screen and we're cooking with heat. This is good stuff. Okay, there's my depth that I have to work with right there. Do I want to be super precise with my thumbnail? Hmm, yep, that's longer than the bolt. So I left this at the setting for that other bolt. I'll just go ahead and pull this over here. So we're good to go. 
that's how much clearance I've got. So there's at least an eighth of an inch still to go before it contacts the screen. Uh, I guess that's the screen beneath the uh, spinner or some of that arrangement in there. Okay then, so away we go. Put the uh, brand new aluminum crush washer on there. I'll try to get it in both cameras here. Uh, put the new crush washer on there. And there's a little bit of oil on the case, so I'm not going to bother pre-lubing the thread there. And I'm just going to run it in with my fingers and see if I feel any tension before I get fully seated. No, no, it's clean all the way up. Good. No problem. Flat it out without any, uh, any fuss. So the MP01 is slightly longer by maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, but it does not cause a, an interference problem by my super scientific testing method there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna snug that just a hair. And then the factory manual calls for 18 foot pounds or pound feet or however you wanna say that. And I've already set the wrench for that a few minutes ago. And I'm trying to hopefully get this all on the cameras here. There's 18 right there. All right. So she is snug down. That's all it needs. Okay, now time to put a whopping 0.8 liters uh, of oil in that crankcase. Close that guy up. Keep it safe over here. Sorry, you guys are looking at my knees. Clean up my mess. Uh, that's gonna be for getting the uh, maintenance plug out and I'll leave that for a few minutes from now. Before I forget, I'm gonna back the tension off on this. It's never good to leave them tensioned because it skews the torque bars inside. Okay. Now, make sure the funnel's all clean and happy. And just to be extra, extra sure that there's nothing in there. Yeehaw. That's clean as a whistle. Okay. Yeah, at least a whistle that hasn't been spit in, huh? Alrighty. No, I have not had this thing off yet. I don't know what kind of a booger it's gonna be. No, oh, no, that's easy. Every now and then, I have to take a wrench to these monkeys on uh, some bikes that I've owned in the past. And uh, I even broke the ear off one of them trying to get it loosened up because somebody at the factory must have thought it was a good idea to crank it down as tight as it would possibly go. That's all clean. I haven't inspected that oil yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, point eight. This thing does not have graduate. Oh, it does have graduations on it. Okay, so I'm going to take that. I don't know if you can see in the uh, reflection there. So I'll take it down to about the 200 mark. Maybe a little further. Run the motor for a few seconds and uh, circulate it. See how it looks in the sight glass. And then the uh, approved procedure from Honda is to run this thing and get it up to operating temp for let's say four to five minutes so good and warm so it expands a bit then you turn it off and you let it sit for a minute uh, so that oil settles back down into the uh, sump down there i'm still at 450 let's keep going <laughs> i can't count the number of times i've done this on other bikes one in particular uh, my XT250. Because of the pan and the arrangement down there, I get busy cleaning it up and I forget to put the stupid plug back in. <laughs> I go pouring it in and it comes right back out. <laughs> you idiot. And you think doing that once would teach you. No. no. If I've done it so many times, I can't count. The monkey never learns. That's about 200 right there. I'm going to go just a hair more because I let it drain for a good long while. That's 200. Okay, let's do that. Let's cap that up. I'm sure she's still clean. Get on there. She's snug. 
Now let's see if we can get our eyeballs on that sight glass down there. Yep. It's uh, at the top full mark uh, in the sight glass, but of course we haven't circulated anything yet. So let's see what that does. I've noticed a couple times when I start this, uh, when it's cold, it'll uh, fire up to life and then sputter down and die about, I don't know, three or four seconds into running. It's unusual for a Honda. It's uh, like the cold start idle setting is a touch too low. All you have to do is just hit the starter again and it fires right up. It actually did that in my first walk around video. It's not really embarrassing, it was just uh, odd. You know, brand new bike. Oh, look how shiny and neat it is. It's fired up to life and it dies. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to wait the full five minutes for warm up. I'll go take it around the block after I uh, make sure it's not leaking. Yeah, just want to get it spun over here and circulated for a minute. And then... Uh, I'll let that settle down and we'll see what the uh, sight glass looks like. I really like the sight glass on there. I much prefer those over the pop the dipstick out, wipe it off, try it two or three times. Uh, those are much more prone to error in my book because you may not be inserting it to the same depth or you might have those threads a little cockeyed or whatever. I uh, much prefer the sight glass. And they're just as accurate as any other method as long as your bike is on a level surface. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, same story. Tiny bit lower. It's just a hair under the full mark. Oh, God, that pavement is hard on the knees. So, yeah. Just a hair under the full mark. So we'll run it around, uh, get it good and warm. I'll check it again, make sure we're not over full. Um, overfill isn't really a big deal unless it's excessive. Um, that's another discussion all in itself. But if you have these small engines over full, uh, you end up hurting your efficiency because of uh, crankshaft windage. Uh, you're actually dragging too much of the crank and the uh, bottom end of the connecting rod through the oil bath and it uh, hurts your efficiency. Worst case, if you're really over full, you can, you can have blow by and all kinds of things. Makes the bike uh, stink and leak and you can have seal issues and whatnot, especially as the oil heats up. Okay, then. That's that. End of the first oil change. Um, while we're still rolling, I see no reason in stopping. Let's go ahead and do this, and that'll give me a chance to start and run the motor again a little bit. Uh, crack open my brand new uh, spray bottle of chain lube here. Okay, now, this is my first time with this. Oh, good, I didn't have to do it. Well, that's actually very loose. Hope I don't lose that on the road someday. I might wanna invest in a couple of these because that came out with just barely a fingernail pull. Hmm, huh. that's interesting, okay. I figured I was gonna have to pry it out and I thought it might be rubber, but it's just a kind of a soft ABS is what it feels like. I think I'll be ordering a couple spares just in case. Oh, and I took still pictures of it earlier, but this, um, that's just dirt smudging. But right here, you can see a scuff that's already happening from my boot uh, and the heel shift. So I was hoping to have enough daylight today. It's probably not gonna work out. Uh, I was gonna put some of that clear sports car bra uh, kind of on this lower quarter down here. Um, but you gotta have good temperature and good light and everything to see what you're doing. I might wait for tomorrow on that. Okay. Let's give her a good shake, shake, shake. Go ahead and start my engine. Check that. Yeah, slack looks good. It's very greasy. I don't know. And the uh, lazy man's way for uh, lubing a chain. If you have a center stand and you haven't figured out this trick, here's my trick. <laughs> Just let it idle in first gear. As long as you don't have a tire or wheel that's terribly out of balance and you're not spinning too fast, then uh, this works a treat. I've had some of my dirt bikes in the past, I'll do this. I'll put them up on a 
uh, trail stand or something, I'll do that. And the, it's hopping up and down so bad, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to be next to it. All right, so the exercise here, unless I'm doing it in the wrong place, is uh, you want to try to get on the top edge of the chain. I don't know if you guys are even seeing that. I'm going to get on the top of the chain and centrifugal force is going to sling it out into the uh, rollers and to the outer parts of the chain. You want to try to get both the inner and outer uh, connecting bars. That's it. Little dabble doer. That is one bright. Check that out. That's cool. So they marked that thing. It uh, it's painted in place. So that looks like. So that's the uh, the master link. So they know that it's been done. And then uh, yeah, I can see a good coating all along the top half. And then I got both the inner and outer uh, sides of those plates. So centrifugal force should pull it through the chain to the outer parts of the rollers. It's not a kink, is it? It almost look like a kink right there. Something else I look for is uh, any links that are binding up. That one, no, nah, that's just optical illusion. Any of the links that are bound or kinked, you can figure that out early, because uh, it's just gonna get worse. Okay, yeah, so looks good. So first chain maintenance done. I uh, checked the tire pressures earlier today. They're still sitting pretty. Uh, first oil change, early oil change is done at 309 miles. Gold plug magnetic drain bolt is installed and we'll see how that, uh, what kind of stuff it catches on the, uh, the next service. Uh, the next one actually I won't catch because the uh, shop is gonna do that. It's the 600 mile. Uh, required service so they're going to dump the oil and i'm sure i won't get to see the drain bolt condition um but the subsequent ones i certainly will because i'm going to do them here and i'll be checking the quality of the oil let's finish up with that get out here into the light a little bit okay well i waited too late into the evening uh, and i don't have direct sunlight i usually like doing this when i can uh get a good visual on uh the oil, you know, get some bright light shining through it, but this will suffice. Okay, so I'm gonna angle the camera here where we can all see it. So what I'm looking for, I'm gonna pour it slow. I'm trying to avoid uh, sloshing it around. That way any of the uh, particulate might stay down in the bottom. Yeah, I see a bunch of uh, sealant flashing in there the uh silicone i'll show you in the bottom of the the pan here in just a second and this was completely clean when i started this so anything solid items detritus that's in the bottom of that was in the crankcase yeah there's quite a bit of it actually okay so I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see all the black flecks and stuff like that. They don't look like they're metallic, but I will test that in a minute. And these are obviously silicone and, you know, uh, crankcase sealant. Uh, but there are some interesting bits over here. And a couple of those are metallic. They're very shiny. That ain't good. That one's shiny. All right, I'm going to get down here closer to the work. So... It's going to be a little tricky to do this. I need a third hand. Luckily, I'm wearing really beat up jeans, so I don't care if I stain them. I've got a couple of uh, heavy duty neodymium magnets here. And I'm just going to run through this, get them all oily. Sorry, I'm trying to keep you guys on camera here. I'm just going to run through this and see if that picks anything up. All that stuff could just be 
flashing. Uh, a couple of them look like they were shiny, but they could be aluminum and non-ferrous. We'll find out in just a second. Not all aluminum, or no, I'm sorry, not all metal is attracted to uh, magnets. Anything non-ferrous is not gonna stick. So, that's just plating on the magnet that's going away. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, more plating on the magnet. Uh, okay, so it doesn't look like there are any sharp, uh, sticky, prickly. Oh, I was wrong, right there. Yep. See him standing up? That's magnetism right there, and that's a sharp guy. So this is exactly what, yeah, that's the one that was sitting over here that I was looking at that was shiny. Uh, and see him jump? Which, oh, yeah. Well, that one is plating of the magnet. Uh, that one that was over here, um, let's get you out of the way. The oil is uh, detergent, so it's starting to break this up. It's not the ideal magnet for testing this. But that guy uh, was a little piece of uh, ferrous metal. And that's the kind of stuff that the uh, gold plug snags. Uh, and it just keeps it bound up on the magnet until you change your oil. So really good stuff. Uh, I've got a couple of review videos on that. Uh, actually, I've only posted one, but I've got two more for my PCX 150s. And I guess three more. I've got another one for uh, the little C3 scooter right there. And all of them were broken in except for the 2016 uh, PCX, which only had like 100 miles on it when I put the gold plug in there. Um, but uh, every time I pulled them out, uh, they've got a little bit of stuff on them. The most surprising one was the uh, 2008 uh, Yamaha XT250. Uh, it was a well broken in, very well maintained motor. Uh, always had the oil changed every 1,500 to 2,000 miles. And uh, I decided to put a gold plug in that guy before I took a mountain excursion up to uh, Arkansas. Uh, did about 300 and some miles of just off-road in the forest trails and gnarly single track stuff. Uh, and uh, changed the oil right before I went, changed it when I got back, and I was shocked. Yeah, there's a piece of shiny. Yep, there's metal, and that's not from the magnet. That's curled up. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's something from the motor. And it's aluminum, because it wasn't attracted to the uh, magnet. Anyway, uh, when I got back from that trip, about not even, not quite 2,000 miles on that trip, uh, I was shocked at how much was sitting on the magnet. It was really disturbing, because that either meant that it was all fresh stuff, which I highly doubt, or uh, that metal detritus had been floating around in the bottom of the sump forever uh, and never got circulated up by the pump uh, and into the filter to get caught by the filter. So that means it's just churning down there in the crankcase and the bottom end bearings and, you know, a lower rod bearing and everything else. So, yeah, yuck. I put these in every bike now. Anyway, hope this was useful to somebody. Uh, Always check the comments, leave a thumbs up if it was useful, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.